This is the story of Seo Jun, where he grew stronger by farming and evolving his pets by giving them his special juice, making them thick. Oh, I mean, thick. What the? Today's like goal is 3,000 likes. Please like and subscribe if you are new to support the channel. Now let's continue. In the previous episode, we saw how, after seeing Ox number 3 and Muscle Lady's thickness, everyone on the Merchant Passage got Riz. No one believed when Theo told them he had hired those two as his free mercenary bodyguard. And when he tried to prove it, he found that the Minotaurs had rushed out of his sight. They were checking up on food items for sale, not aware that their presence alone is terrifying to other creatures. Theo stopped them and lectured them about leaving him. Then he gave the confused Ox number 3 a history lesson about the Tower Passageway, which was cleared and developed with the combined efforts of the Wandering Merchant Association, the Free Mercenary Association, and the Magic Tower. However, since the Wandering Merchant Association took over the management of the passageways, they were called Merchant Passageways. He also told the Minotaurs about the premium passageways that only merchants and those with money can access. After that, Theo decided to take the two Minotaurs for lunch before they headed down to the 38th floor. Suddenly, the leader of the Silver Wolf mercenaries attacked him. Theo dodged his surprise attack, and as the wolf boss, Ela, asked him about the stolen straw hat, Ox Number 3 attacked him. Theo told the Minotaur that this was the wolf who attacked him before, but before he could do anything, the other two wolves jumped on Ox Number 3. Just then, Cow Number 4 came to cover for her boyfriend. She hit the other two wolves away and then decided to take charge of fighting. She left the job of protecting Theo to her boyfriend, who seemed to be proud that his girl was stronger than him. Theo told Muscle Lady not to kill the wolves, but she didn't make any promises. The next moment, the three wolves dashed toward the Muscle Lady and then jumped, ready to tear her with their razor-sharp claws. The Muscle Lady also got prepared for her devastating punch, but the three wolves scattered in different directions, confusing her about whom to attack. Taking this opportunity, Elka bit her right arm, surprising her. The chief was coming from above, and Elko was dashing toward her from the left to bite her left leg. In the next moment, Elko did bite her left leg, and the chief, with a dead serious face, was ready to pierce the muscle lady's body. She was in a tight situation. The chief then grabbed the muscle lady's horn, which startled her. Then, with great force, the chief growled, opened his razor-sharp teeth, and with a crunching sound bit her milkers. Now, at this moment, the muscle lady was in some serious trouble. Elka and Elko were biting her arms and legs, and the chief, well, he was chewing her milkers. I'm telling you, I will kill those puppies if they don't let her go. But surprise, surprise, even after chewing with all his might, the chief was not able to pierce her skin and get the milk out. He wondered why her skin is so tough. Now the muscle lady started to laugh, asking if this is all they've got. She wanted to know how powerful they were, and she is really disappointed. Then she shook her milkers, and the force was enough to give a devastating blow to Elka, and his nose started to bleed. Then she grabbed him from his collar and threw him afar. The chief just watched in shock. Elko, seeing this, panicked, but even before he could react, a devastating kick came flying toward him. With great force, our muscle lady kicked his stomach, and he flew backward, falling on his stomach with his tongue out. Well, I know I shouldn't laugh, but this tongue, what the hell? Now only the chief was left, wondering how the hell she took out both of them in a single blow. Whatever happens, he can't let her go. He was clinging to her with all his might, but our muscle lady simply grabbed his collar and smacked him onto the ground in a single blow, and he let out a painful groan. Now she was preparing her fist to finish the chief off, and he knew he was screwed, waiting for his death. With great force, she punched the chief's face, and at that moment he went into a flashback. There, we see he was a kid, and his grandfather, while gently with care, explained that they are pure-blooded silver wolf tribe, only the proud and honorable Silver Wolf awakens their spirit form, and their ancestor was one who awakened it first. His grandfather said no matter what, he has to always be honorable and proud wolf, and the kid chief agreed happily, saying he will always be honest and a proud member of Silver Wolf. But then something disastrous happened. Slowly, their whole farmland became barren, their ponds dried, and they started to face food shortages. Because of this chaos, everyone became desperate. One day, a neighboring tribe attacked their tribe for food and everyone died. His grandfather sacrificed himself and his father ran, taking him, and he couldn't do anything but cry in pain. When he grew up, he became the tribe chief, just like his grandfather wished. 
But he was no longer the proud and honorable Silver Wolf like his grandfather wished. He started working for the corrupted grid, and everyone was not happy. They started asking for answers. Why he is working for a person who destroyed their village? Because of grid, his grandfather died, and he's not even embarrassed. But before they could complete their questions, the chief shut them off, saying he had no choice. They don't even know if their clan can survive the next day. And Grid promised him that if he worked under him, he would take care of the clan, provide fresh food and water, and that's all that matters. He was ready to throw all his honor and pride for the survival of his tribe. And like that, he started doing all dirty works for Grid, from killing to exorcism, threatening. He became Grid's puppet, and now, at the blink of death, he said to his grandfather that he is really sorry, and he will be coming to him very soon. Back to the present, we see our muscle lady didn't smash the chief's face. She punched beside his face because Theo had asked her not to kill them, so she showed them her mercy. Theo, curious, came close to him, and while checking if he just passed out or was dead, asked if he would wake up soon. The muscle lady, with a confident smile, asked if Theo was scared of him waking up. She could break his legs so that he wouldn't be able to follow Theo and harm him. Hearing this, Theo was startled and replied that the sin of going after his life is heavy, but he is not a cruel guy. So he decided to take these puppies to Siojun and let him decide what to do with them. With that, they carried the three puppies and started walking forward. Meanwhile, back in the cave, the bald man started to glow like an LED light and the sickle rabbit and the baby bear were getting panic-stricken every second. Then the sickle rabbit asked the baby bear what to do, but he had no answers, and both of them were sweating in fear. Siojun then politely asked if the haircut was done and started to touch his hair, trying to feel his silky hairs. The sickle rabbit was just standing with his mouth open, scared out of his wits. Siojun, after realizing his hair was missing at the back, freaked out with a pale face and started to scream, asking what happened. The sickle rabbit and baby bear didn't know what to do and were still sweating heavily. Then, baby queen bee seeing this came curious and also checked Seo Jun's baldness. Seo Jun said he couldn't see how badly his hair got removed and if he had known something like this might have happened, he would have asked Theo to get a mirror. After that, the sickle rabbit, holding his hands and bowing his head, started to apologize heavily. He said he was really sorry. Seo Jun, seeing the situation, said it was all right. He said everyone makes mistakes and he really wasn't mad at him. It's not like there's anyone to see him like this. There's only one person and everyone else are his monster buddies, so he really doesn't care. Then, he wore his straw hat and, with a warm smile, started to laugh while holding his straw hat tightly. He said if he uses the straw hat to cover his head, no one will be able to see it. Then he started to laugh weirdly, saying again and again, It's fine, ha 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 but inside he was broken, depressed. He sat beside a tree, all depressed, and started to cry. Seeing this, the sickle rabbit and the baby bear didn't know what to do. Just then, the mommy rabbit came, and seeing her, the baby bear got even more panicked and nervous. The sickle rabbit just sat there, as if nothing happened. He knew he was going to get scolded. The next moment, the mommy rabbit furiously started to scold both the sickle rabbit and baby bear. Finally, after a heavy scolding session, the mommy rabbit holding Seo Jun started to walk forward, and the sickle rabbit also helped push Seo Jun to walk. Seo Jun was just holding his straw hat, trying to hide his face, saying he was really okay. Then the next moment, Seo Jun was once again sitting, covering himself with a cloth made of onion leaves. The sickle rabbit was holding a piece of white wet cloth. The baby bear was holding Seo Jun's straw hat, and the mommy bear was taking something out from her fourth dimensional pocket. The next moment, with a naughty and mischievous smile, she took out grass cutting scissors, ready to do a makeover. Meanwhile, the tower manager was munching on cherry tomatoes while reading a book titled 100 Ways to Seduce a Human. Then she noticed Seo Jun's juicy cherries got finished, and she felt sad, wondering what to do. Ever since she got bigger, the amount of food she needed had increased, and Seo Jun's offerings were no longer enough to satisfy her hunger. She thought about asking Seo Jun for more of his juicy cherries, but remembered that if she asked for more food, Seo Jun might misunderstand her and call her a pig with wings, which she hated. She decided that she would start to stalk Seo Jun using her crystal ball. She took out her grandfather's crystal ball with excitement, thinking that this would divert her mind from food, as seeing Seo Jun every day was much more fun than eating or doing anything else. However, as she gazed into the crystal ball, she saw something strange, and her expression changed to seriousness. She immediately called Seo Jun and asked him what had happened. Seo Jun, confused, inquired about what she was talking about. 
not understanding her concern. She explained that she was asking about him, and Seo Jun's appearance changed. Seo Jun, with a smile, slowly removed his straw hat, saying, Oh, she was asking about his hair. It had grown too long, so the mommy rabbit gave him a haircut. And then, finally, we got to see the new look of Seo Jun. His hair was shorter, and with an adorable smile while holding his hair, he asked how his new look was. Well, this revelation was too much for our virgin tower manager, and butterflies started to tickle all over her body as she saw this transformation. She screamed in surprise. Meanwhile, the tower manager immediately called Seo Jun and asked him what had happened. Seo Jun, confused, inquired about what she was talking about not understanding her concern. She explained that she was asking about him, and Seo Jun's appearance changed. Seo Jun, with a smile, slowly removed his straw hat, saying, Oh, she was asking about his hair. It had grown too long, so the mommy rabbit gave him a haircut. And then, finally, we got to see the new look of Seo Jun. His hair was shorter, and with an adorable smile while holding his hair, he asked how his new look was. Well... This revelation was too much for our virgin tower manager, and butterflies started to tickle all over her body as she saw this transformation. Aileen went into silent mode. She was just too speechless to even talk, and Seo Jun wondered why she went into silent mode. Does she not like his new haircut? Confused, Seo Jun continuously called for the tower manager, asking what happened and why she was not replying. He also asked her what she thinks about his haircut, if it's good. But the tower manager already got flustered. She was frozen on the spot, just glaring at an angry Seo Jun. Her face turned red with her mouth wide open. Butterflies started to tickle in her stomach. Then, as Seo Jun tried to come close to the crystal ball, a message from her appeared, warning Seo Jun not to come any closer or she might die. This worried Seo Jun, and he asked if something was wrong. In reality, she herself didn't know what was happening with her, so she explained that it was nothing just that she was hungry and asked if Seo Jun could give her some crayfish she had the other day. Hearing this, Seo Jun laughed, saying he knew it was because of food, but he explained that he's really sorry. He can't give her crayfish because lately, the population of crayfish has started to decrease. He mentioned that only one out of three are coming out now, meaning the population had decreased by 70%, and the piranhas are also nowhere to be seen, because crayfish eat all the piranhas. Seo Jun himself has been eating only vegetables these days, so he's starting to feel a bit empty. He suggested that, for now, the tower manager has to eat a little slowly or only eat vegetables until the crayfish repopulate themselves. Then, Seo Jun took out his basket made up of onion leaves full of corn, and with a warm smile said that for now, he can give her this. He also had some cherry tomatoes in reserve. Then, with a warm smile, Seo Jun mentioned that she must have run out of dried potatoes too, so he also offered some of those to her. A notification popped up, telling Seo Jun that the tower manager was thankful to him. However, she stopped midway. And seeing the lack of response from Aileen, Seo Jun asked about what the manager was going to say. Finally, another notification popped up, telling Seo Jun that the tower manager liked his new hairstyle and that it suits him well. Just after he read that message, the notification window disappeared in an instant, maybe because Aileen was feeling shy when she told Seo Jun how she really feels. Seo Jun remarked sarcastically, Aileen sure knows how to give compliments. He didn't give too much thought to the conversation because he needed to focus on work again. On the other hand, Aileen was shaking to the core when she held the bucket of corns in her huge hands. She was flustered on all levels, feeling like she needed to pee, which was a new sensation for her. She didn't know what to do, so she immediately dismissed the thoughts coming into her mind and consoled herself by saying that she was just surprised because of Seo Jun's sudden change of appearance. She decided to forget everything and just start eating what she got. Then, she thought that every time it was Seo Jun who gave her food, and this time she would do something for him. She ran towards her huge library and found a book named The Great Cookbook with a brown hardcover. Aileen was happy as she decided that she would cook something special for Seo Jun with all her might. Holding the book with a shy face, she wondered if Seo Jun would like her dish. As these thoughts came out of her mouth, she blushed intensely and giggled, covering her mouth with the book. As the scene shifts, we see that the great wandering cat merchant, Theo, has now arrived on the lower levels, announcing to the humans that he was finally there. As soon as he arrived, a horde of hunters encircled him. The hunters did not waste any time in welcoming the cat merchant and immediately asked about the amount of cherry tomatoes he had today. They desperately asked the merchant to take out his items because there were a lot of people who were in need of the cherry tomatoes right now outside the tower. 
Listening to their desperation, Theo took out a basket full of 400 cherry tomatoes out of his bag and started to auction them like before in batches of 400, with a total of 3,600 cherry tomatoes. The hunters were surprised when they came to know that the cherry tomatoes were in even greater numbers than before. Soon, Theo began the auction and closed the deal at the highest bid of 400 cherry tomatoes for 200 tower coins. Theo was taking out the remaining cherry tomatoes, but suddenly, a hunter came to him and offered him 1,600 tower coins for the rest of them. The other hunters were in shock by this huge amount of money, but the guy with the money threatened them, asking them if they wanted to go against Gaggle. At last, all the remaining cherry tomatoes were sold to the company. The rest of the hunters were worried as there were already no cherry tomatoes outside the tower, and now a big company was just trying to monopolize everything. Among the hunters was the chief of the Phoenix Guild, Dong Shik, who was also worried for the ordinary hunters who were not able to buy the cherry tomatoes because of the big companies. Another hunter was planning to buy some cherry tomatoes for the meeting he was going to have with his soon-to-be in-laws, but he was now not able to do so. He was devastated, screaming and holding his head. Dong Shik was pretending to be sad from the outside, but in reality he was well acquainted with Theo and could make another transaction with Seo Jun on the 40th floor. However, his thoughts and plans were soon going to be shattered. Suddenly, someone from the company screamed while looking at the cherry tomatoes. The name of the cultivator who was producing the cherry tomatoes was now revealed. One of the company's guys saw the name and understood that the farmer was a Korean cultivator, the tower farmer, Park Seo Jun. The guild master immediately ran towards the person, snatching his cherry tomato and taking a look at it by himself in the options menu. The cultivator's name was now visible along with the effects of the cherry tomato. Even the chief was surprised to know that Park Seo Jun was a tower farmer. The company's hunter ordered his men to return to the guild camp on the first floor and find out about Park Seo Jun at once. He wanted to get the farmer on their side as soon as possible. The hunter was now very happy and started laughing frantically because he was going to get a lot of compliments and a promotion from the vice chairman in exchange for the valuable information he had. Dong Shik was now in a pinch. He was going to lose a valuable talent if he did not do something fast. Even more than anything, Seo Jun's family was now in danger because for the rich people outside the tower, cherry tomatoes were more valuable than jewels. Many were using it like a drug. The effects were so strong that basically, the rich became addictive to this. They could use unfair means and kidnap the family of Seo Jun to establish their monopoly in the market. The chief knew that Seo Jun never got out of the tower because of the long quest he had to do, and since he only received information about the outside through Theo, he was not aware of the bad situation his family was in. The chief's train of thought was interrupted when the wandering merchant Theo finally found him and called out to him. But even without listening to Theo, Dong Shik immediately took Theo in his arms and started running to a silent place. Theo asked what was happening, and Dong Shik said just to hold on for a moment. He would explain everything. Finally, after running from something, Dong Shik checked if there was anyone following him or not. After confirming they were alone, he gently placed Theo on the ground and asked Theo about why Seo Jun's name was now revealed in his crops. Theo told the chief with nervousness that it was so because he became a mid-tier wandering merchant. Now, the names of the cultivators or producers from whom he gets his items would be visible on the item itself. But Theo was still oblivious to the wrong he did by revealing Seo Jun's name to the public. He was shocked to the core when the chief told him that Park Seo Jun's family was now in danger due to this revelation. He told Theo that the situation outside the tower was not good and everyone was causing an uproar because of the shortage of cherry tomatoes. It was all fine until now because the name of the cultivator was hidden. But now it was a different story. Many people knew his name, and some of them would not even hesitate to do bad things to his family to establish their monopoly on the supply of cherry tomatoes. Realizing what is happening, Theo got panicked and worriedly asked Dong Shik if all this was happening because of him, all because he became a mid-tier wandering merchant. He did all the hard work to become a mid-tier merchant just for this. He wanted everyone to know the crop's cultivator was Seo Jun, but to make Seo Jun happy, he didn't know it would create such a big commotion. Then Theo asked the chief about what he should do to fix the situation. He was afraid that he's going to be scolded by Seo Jun for what he did, and he will never become the chairman. But Dong Shik consoled him by kneeling down and promising him that he will protect Park Seo Jun's family, even if he had to put the honor of the Phoenix Guild on the line. Theo was now happy and thanked the chief for his kind gesture. As the chief decided to go to the lower levels of the tower, Theo stopped him and told him that he had to do a favor for Park Seo 
Theo Jun. Once again, Theo took out two baskets full of corn and carrots and told the chief that they were a present from Seo Jun to his family. He promised the chief that he would get 200 magic cherry tomatoes for delivering these items to his family safely. The chief was baffled, knowing that the gifts were actually the carrots of agility and corns of stamina. He was not able to comprehend what would happen if the outside world finds out about these items. But when Theo asked him if it was dangerous, the chief assured him that he will take Park San's gift to his family without fail. As Theo departed for the 99th floor, he said his goodbyes to the chief. Upon looking at the cherry tomatoes, the chief sighed and decided that the situation can be handled only if he lets his master know about what was going on. The scene shifts, and we come to the entrance of the 38th the eighth floor passageway, where Ox Number 3 and Muscle Lady were sitting and calmly eating the onion leaves, while the wolf chief was deeply frustrated cursing the monsters and asking them if they had lost their pride. He tried to provoke the monsters by asking them if they were really okay to work under a lowly wandering merchant. He even mocked the legends of the 99th floor, telling them that they were all lies. How can the monsters from the 99th floor work for a lowly cat? Hearing all this, Muscle Lady was getting annoyed by this constant chatter and wanted to hit the wolf chief one more time at his head. But Ox Number 3 stopped her because if she will do it, the wolf will definitely die from the impact. Suddenly, Theo came towards them, running as fast as he could. Theo told them that they had to quickly go up to the 99th floor because it was urgent. The oxes were shocked when they saw Theo coming back so quickly and asked about the urgency of the matter. But Theo told them that there was no time to waste talking and promised them that he would explain everything to them on their way. Listening to the cat merchant, Ox number three and Muscle Lady again picked up the wolf mercenaries and decided to go to the 99th floor. Once again, Muscle Lady was disappointed, knowing that she would have to eat mud again once she got to the 99th floor. But Theo suddenly asked them to stop and wait for a bit as he looked towards a street vendor who was selling different items. He ran towards the cute black bear and picked up a locket from his wares, asking the shopkeeper about its price. The bear told him that it would cost him two tower coins, but Theo asked him for a discount as he was taught by SEO June always to ask for it. Ox 3 and Muscle Lady looked at him in amazement, thinking about what Theo was doing. Now we see Dong Shik wearing heavy warm clothes and still trembling due to the cold. In front of him was a middle-aged man who was telling him the report about Seo Jun, an unknown and mysterious class of farmer. One day, he mysteriously went inside the tower due to vanishing, and according to him, Seo Jun is definitely on a higher floor than the 40th floor, and his exact location is unknown. Then we get a closer look at the man. He was sitting, holding his foot in a slab of ice cube. He was Tae Jun, the former guild master of Phoenix Guild and the top 10 strongest hunter in the world. Then Dong Shik asked Tae Jun how he is doing. This angered him furiously, and suddenly he became Endeavor. With all his hair turned flaming and while breaking his ice slab, he asked, Does it look like he is having a good time, huh? He is locked up in this fridge and only sucks his fingers. And how dare Dong Shik hide the fact that someone unofficially went above floor 40. But Dong Shik remained calm, which made Tai Jun lose interest, saying Dong Shik is no fun. At least he would have acted a little scared. Dong Shik sarcastically apologized, saying he will try next time. Then the master sat down and Dong Shik saw that the master was coughing heavily, and mysterious marks on his hands were spreading rapidly. Dong Shik understood that the curse of the flame was spreading further into his master's body. But the master ignored his disciple's concern, telling him that this kind of thing was just a bit ticklish for him, and if it was not for the curse, he would have already run off into the tower right away. The master finally came to the point, asking Dong Shik about the reason that had brought him to the master's place because he was not such an individual that would come to his master's place just to see him struggling and suck his fingers. Dong Shik finally came to the point, asking the master for the support of the Awakened Association to protect Sejun's family. Since the producer of the cherry tomatoes had been revealed, there would be a lot of pressure from all around the world to find him and his family. The master assured Dong Shik not to worry about it, as he had already formed a security unit the moment he received the call from the guild members. He told Dong Gik to take charge of the unit since he knew everyone well, and it would be more convenient. The master was determined that they cannot let a precious talent be stolen by another country. 
because there had already been attempts to reach out to Sejun's family from several countries. Dongshik was surprised that his master was already two steps ahead of him. He thanked his master with all his heart and presented him with some magic cherry tomato. The master was surprised when he looked at a basket full of cherry tomatoes, not able to understand what they were. But Dongshik explained to him that the tomatoes he held in his hands were the ones cultivated by Park Sejun and were given to Dongshik by the wandering cat merchant. Dongshik knew that even if they had a weak effect, they would definitely help his master, even if it was just a little. The master was amused by seeing the cherry tomato for the first time and took a bite of it with a smile, admitting that it was indeed delicious. As the scene shifts, we see that Sejun's family was struck by seeing baskets full of cherry tomatoes, carrots, and corns. They were not able to comprehend what such a large quantity of vegetables was doing in their house, but Sejun's little brother was smart. He knew that these were no ordinary vegetables, but the tower items that have been very popular recently. Even the cherry tomatoes were known as the tomatoes of weight loss. He asked Dongshik if the carrots and corns were all farmed by Seo Jun, and Dongshik immediately had a serious tone in his voice as he told Seo Jun's mother that even if she was not aware of the situation, many people were targeting them, making all of them unsafe inside their house. Dongshik informed the family members that the Korean Awakened Association wanted to protect them and asked them to hurry up and prepare to move. Seo Jun's mother was hesitant, knowing that they had to move all of a sudden. His father complained that they hadn't even paid off the loan of the house they were in yet. But Dongshik informed all of them that the association had already prepared a house for them in Hanam Dong. Hearing the name Hanam, a bright smile came onto the face of Seo Jun's younger brother, along with shocked expressions of his parents when they came to know that they would live in a place where famous people live. The brother wanted to know about who would be their neighbor, but as Dongshik told him that he and his family would be there protecting them, he was immediately disappointed. He expected a girl group to live nearby, but it was the complete opposite. Hearing these words, Dong Shik immediately asked him if he liked girl groups and if he knew the girl group LJSN. The boy immediately replied in a yes, telling Dong Shik that every citizen of South Korea knows that girl group and he is a very, very big fan of theirs. Then Dong Shik smirked as he revealed a trump card inside his phone. He told the boy that his daughter Sarah was a member of LJSN girls group and he even offered to invite him to his house if they move. Hearing this, the younger brother got chills on his body as he specially liked Sarah. He really likes her songs and dance. He knew Sarah's father was a hunter, but he didn't know it was Dongshik. Then he immediately bowed down and addressed Dongshik as father, requesting him to immediately take him into his care, shocking his parents as well as Dongshik. His parents were surprised by this immediate behavior change of their son, and his dad asked his mom about why he was calling Dongshik father, but his mother was not able to reply. Ignoring her husband's question, she instead told him that she was worried about Seo Jun. Previously, his parents knew that Seo Jun went to earn money inside the tower, but they would have never thought that he would be farming inside the tower. His mother was worried that Seo Jun was working so hard, asking her husband if anyone was taking care of their son. As the scene shifts, we see Aileen, who was reading the great cookbook while preparing a hearty meal for Seo Jun. She mixed some wonder-working mushrooms with a millennium-old dimension starving demon. She finally seasoned it with some secret powder, and finally she gave her special juice. And as soon as she did, a bright light emerged from the pot, and finally, her special dish for her crush was ready. Meanwhile, Seo Jun, unaware of what is going to happen to him, was harvesting some spring onions. He knelt down to the ground, sitting comfortably while telling the black rabbit that green onions grown from the flower seeds were all growing well and they can finally harvest them. Seo Jun collected seeds from green onion flowers two weeks ago and planted them outside the cave in the hopes of getting an item. And as soon as he harvested, he got shocked. A status window popped up telling him that he had harvested a detoxifying green onion. As the effect of Harvest Level 4, Seo Jun has harvested crops that were one level higher than normal, and due to this, job experience has increased greatly. A notification window popped up, telling Se Jun that as an effect of proficiency increase level 1, the proficiency of Harvest Level 3 was increased additionally by 5%, and due to it, Seo Jun has acquired 36 experience points. Finally, there was the glittering green onion with detoxifying effects. A status window popped up telling Sejun that the green onions were able to detoxify poisons of grade C or lower for one hour straight when ingested. When consumed, 
the liver's detoxification function becomes active for 24 hours. The crop had a shelf life of 135 days and was a C-plus grade item. C.O. June and the Black Rabbit were so happy, knowing that they have got an item which came out of the seeds or fruits they planted. C.O. June knew from the start that he should have harvested the seeds and planted them long ago, but it doesn't matter now because they were still happy with the outcome. C.O. June wanted to have a taste of detoxifying green onion and took a bite of it, while also giving the black rabbit a piece of the leaf to taste. The black rabbit was confused, not able to tell any difference in taste. Even Seo Jun exclaimed that the taste was not much different from the ones they usually eat, and he was not even able to tell about the poison detoxifying feature at that time. But he knew for sure that as the crop activated lever function, it would be of great help to those who drank alcohol. He decided that as green onions grew quickly, once there was a lot of it, he is surely going to sell them all. Suddenly, the chubby rabbit came and called out Seo Jun from behind, telling him that it was time to eat already. The rabbits and Seo Jun looked at the water pond with disappointment, knowing that the amount of piranha and crayfish has decreased. They would not appear even if Seo Jun tried to lure them out with his blood. But as there was nothing that they can do, Seo Jun decided that he and his friends will have to give up on meat for the time being. Suddenly, a notification window popped up in front of Seo Jun, surprising him. It told Seo Jun that the tower manager has prepared a gift to celebrate 200 days of his arrival in the tower. Seo Jun was surprised by knowing that he was inside the tower for 200 days now. As the rabbits were disappointed on not getting to eat meat for a few days, Sejun was happy that Aileen was giving him a present. He told her that he was feeling touched by her preparing something for him. Immediately, a new quest popped up, asking him to give one magic cherry tomato to Aileen. The reward was a secret, and Sejun was not having an option to refuse the tower manager's gift. Knowing that it was such a small task, Seojun gave a cherry tomato to the tower manager, completing his quest. A notification window popped up telling Seojun that a reward has been given to him for completing the quest. The window let him know that he has acquired Aileen's special juicy soup. As soon as Seo Jun finished reading about it, a large cauldron materialized in front of him, surprising and shocking him to the core. Seo Jun's face turned purple in horror as he saw something which was looking like poison of green color with various animal bodies inside of it. A notification window popped up, telling Seo Jun that it was Aileen's special juicy soup. If consumed, it can increase Seo Jun's stats by three, but only if he can survive the poison. Lastly, it was prepared by the love and special juice of Black Dragon Aileen. Just the smell was enough to scare the rabbits to death, and they were making disgusting faces. While glaring at the pot, Seo Jun asked, is Aileen really made this to eat? But another notification window popped up telling Seo Jun that Aileen was going to sleep as she was exhausted from putting too much special juice into the juice. Just like that, the tower manager went into deep sleep, saying she made this dish with great care so Seo Jun has to finish it all. Seo Jun started screaming, calling the tower manager, but she was already in deep slumber. Seo Jun turned toward the rabbits and said, Why don't all of them eat it together? Well, they didn't want to do so soon, so they ran for their life, leaving Seo Jun alone. Even the Queen Bee made a disgusting face after seeing the dish. Seo Jun's face turned purple with disgust as he glared at the disgusting soup where weird ass monsters' fingers, a honeybee, a frog, and an eyeball were popping out. Drinking it would increase three stat points upon consumption, but it gave a grade C paralyzing poison as well as a grade C acidic poison upon consumption. As the rabbits and the bee came towards the liquid, Seo Jun was thinking that even though the soup was like poison, all of his stats would increase by three if he drank it, but still, a grade C paralyzing poison and acidic poison were too risky. Suddenly, the black rabbit came towards Seo Jun and said something to him in its cute voice. The rabbit grabbed the detoxifying green onion into his hand and reminded Seo Jun that now he had a grade C detoxifying green onion in his arsenal. Seo Jun smiled knowing that with this ingredient, the poisonous soup might be all right to drink after all. The chubby rabbit brought a whole lot of detoxifying green onions, and as Seo Jun saw them, he knew that at least now he would not die due to the poison of the soup. He decided to eat a lot of them and give himself protection from grade C+, plus, or lower poisons for one hour. Seo Jun was ready with a spoon, and as his preparation was completed, and all the rabbits along with the bee, he thought although the soup looks disgusting, its taste might be good. Thinking this, he took a sip, but oh boy, 
Tower Manager's special juice was too thick for Seo Jun. He immediately spilled all the juice out, which splattered all over the baby queen bee and all the rabbit's bodies. Seo Jun then started to vomit, and the baby bee was furious, scolding Seo Jun, covered in Seo Jun's sticky saliva. Seo Jun, well, he started to cry as the system continued to notify him that he got grade C paralyzing poison and it got healed because of the spring onion. Now Seo Jun was very angry, imagining Aileen like a winged fat pig. But if he didn't finish her special juice, the tower manager would get sad, so he decided to finish all her special juice in one go. Closing his eyes, he started gulping the juice immediately in one go, shocking all the rabbit. As Seo Jun continued to drink it, the taste started to become more horrifying, but Seo Jun didn't give up. But after that, an even more disgusting thing happened. As the juice finally got finished, Seo Jun opened his eyes. He got welcomed by someone's ass. A truly disgusting creature, alive, was staring at Seo Jun. Scared, Seo Jun threw the pot, and the pot fell into the pond with the weird ass creature. Suddenly, a series of stat windows filled his vision about gaining experience points by killing piranhas, crayfish, but it was not the end. Then a big system notification came that Seo Jun also killed a big giant electrical eel, gaining a whopping 5,000 exp, shocking Seo Jun to his core, knowing that there was a giant electric eel living inside the small pond. Seo Jun looked at the pond along with the rabbits and the bee and saw that the pond was now poisoned. All the rabbits were now angry at Seo Jun for poisoning the pond as they will not get to eat meat as each monster died in the pond due to the poison. Seo Jun apologized and told them that he was just so flustered that he couldn't help but throw the soup. He decided that they will not eat stuff from the pond for the time being, and Seo Jun will solve the drinking water problem with water cans for the rabbit. But he was still concerned about the hole in the pond, knowing that a lot of piranhas and crayfish died after being poisoned. He started thinking that as the poison even killed a giant electric eel, that meant that there was a large ecosystem inside the hole from where the pond water came. The amount of piranhas and crayfish flowing into the pond had decreased, but if Seo Jun would find a way into their ecosystem, he will be able to obtain various sources of protein in the future. Hearing that, the rabbits were so happy, and the black rabbit proposed that he should try swimming through the hole of the pond, but Seo Jun was worried about the rabbit and denied his request, telling him that the pond water was still poisoned, and even if the rabbit ate the detoxifying green onion, the hole was too small for him to get inside. Seo Jun didn't want the black rabbit to risk it, because if something goes wrong inside the hole, he would not be able to come back. Seo Jun told the rabbit that he knows how much he wanted to go inside the hole, but the rabbit was so precious that Seo Jun can't send him off to such a dangerous place alone. He promised the rabbit that he will think of it when the water in the pond has been diluted to some extent. Seo Jun stood up and made a happy face as he told the rabbits that there was still food that they have saved up together, and due to that, they will be fine for a while. So he wanted all the rabbits to stop being gloomy and cheer up. As the scene shifts, we come to the waypoint of the Miner's King base, and as we see, the king was sitting on his throne with one hand on his cheek. He was still thinking about why Ox Number 3 was not in front of him yet. He wondered if Ox Number 3 forgot about the king's order and asked Ox Number 1 if Rainy Mountain, who went to look for Ox Number 3, had returned or not. But Ox Number 1 informed the king that even she hasn't returned yet from her mission. Even Ox Number 1 was now worried telling the king that he was wondering if both of them are in some kind of danger. Did they enter the Crimson Bear's territory and had a fight? He heard that the Crimson Bear is a very furious and dangerous beast, and he heard not even one bone remains after fighting Crimson Bear. The Ox King admitted Crimson Bear is strong, but he said he knows Ox Number 4 is also strong, and together they can give a tough fight to the Crimson Bear, and he thinks there is entirely something else happening. With a serious face, Ox King commanded all his army to gather, saying now now he himself will go to find what is happening. As the scene shifts, we see that Seo Jun and the rabbits, along with the bear, looked at a pile of green onions. Seo Jun even exclaimed that this much green onion should be enough to feed 100 miners until they are full. My boy didn't know that he may have to do so soon. The baby bear was in a playful mood and ran towards the pile of spring onions, jumping on them, while the mother bear and Seo Jun looked at him with surprise. Seo Jun asked the baby bear if he liked the feeling of a soft and fluffy bed. Hearing that, the bear smiled happily, and as Seo Jun saw that, he told the bear to take some of the green onions home and share them when he got to sleep with his mom. Suddenly, a notification popped up, 
telling Seo Jun that wishing for a good harvest level 1 was now activated, and 70% of the green onion field was now blessed with a good harvest. Due to its effect, the harvest rate was increased by 50% for the next week. Seo Jun was happy to the core by getting to know about this effect of his skill. The green onions already grew fast in the first place, but they will now grow in an instant with the effect of wishing for a good harvest skill. Seo Jun decided that he will harvest the onions thrice now. Instead of twice, he did it before. Seo Jun looked at the sickle rabbit as they were getting ready for the harvest because now Se Jun's stats were also in increased a lot due to Eileen's deadly soup. Suddenly, Seo Jun saw that the tower manager was asking him if he had eaten all the soup up which she made. Seeing the notification, Seo Jun was happy as he flexed his muscles in front of the notification, telling Eileen that he indeed drank all the soup and even leveled up thanks to her. But suddenly, Eileen wanted to know about how the soup tasted, which shocked Seo Jun to the core. He did not even want to remember the taste of the deadly soup again. But as he saw that the tower manager was sad and was asking if the soup tasted bad, he immediately told Eileen that her special juice was delicious, and that was the reason that he finished all of it at once. He even told Eileen that her juice was so delicious that he would even die to eat it again. Hearing this, she got excited, saying if Seo Jun liked her cooking so much, she will make one more serving for him. Hearing that, Seo Jun immediately stopped Eileen and told her that as she used all her energy because of making the soup for him, she did not need to do it once again. Seo Jun told her that he liked chatting away with Eileen, and there was no need to use up all her energy because of him, as if she gets into deep sleeping after she cooks. How can he will be able to talk with her? Seo Jun told her that he will do the cooking and would like letting Eileen eat delicious and better food. He tried to convince Eileen that she did not need to work hard to cook anymore, but deep inside, Seo Jun just wanted Eileen to agree to his requests so that he will not have to taste the deadly soup again. On the other hand, Eileen was all flustered, and her cheeks were red as she thought that Seo Jun was thinking that much about her. She laughed frantically and punched the pillar of her room, not able to control her excitement and breaking the pillar into pieces. Then Seo Jun got a notification that the tower manager was okay with his request, and reading that, Seo Jun was immediately happy thanking Eileen from deep within his ass. Eileen changed the topic, asking Seo Jun about what was on that day's dinner menu. But suddenly, the ground started shaking, and all the rabbits along with the bear fell to the ground as the mother bear and Seo Jun saw that the ox king was walking towards them while trampling over Seo Jun's field of green onions. The mother bear was ready for a fight, while Seo Jun was shocked to the core by witnessing the arrival of another minotaur. As the king saw the group, he started running towards Seo Jun with a faint light coming out of its eyes. As the Minotaur King heads towards Seo Jun's group, trampling the green onion plants with his fat ass shining axe, Seo Jun and the rabbits were scared to their core. Seo Jun shouted with his mouth open, Another Minotaur with a huge ass? And why is it coming toward us? Just then, the Ox King gave a bone-chilling growl with deadly eyes and the shockwave was enough to create a mini-tornado. Seo Jun covered his ears to block the sound. Now as the Ox King continued to march towards Seo Jun, he was getting panicked. When the tower manager explained, Aileen dropped him a message telling him that he is not just any Minotaur, but the Minotaur King, the boss of the 99th floor. Hearing this, Seo Jun crapped his pants. After reading the guidebook of the boss, Aileen explained that a tower boss can't leave the waypoint, and she herself didn't know how the Ox King came. But she vowed to protect Seo Jun, her love, and used her authority as tower manager to stop the Ox King. But to her surprise, her authority got declined, surprising her. Now Seo Jun got really panicked, and the rabbits were now clinging on to Seo Jun, all scared. The Ox King dashed towards Seo Jun, and the mommy bear stood high, ready to stop him. But the tower manager explained that the mommy bear is nowhere close to the Ox King's level, and she will die. Hearing this, Seo Jun shouted at the mommy bear to stop, but she didn't. She stood right there to protect everyone. The Minotaur King jumped high with his fat ass axe, growling menacingly, and Seo Jun clung into the baby bear with all his animal friends, shouting and saying, So is this how he will die? Even the tower manager started to cry, holding her crystal ball, continuously trying to use her authority, but it was not working. But then suddenly, the Minotaur King's axe lands at a safe distance from him with a great impact. Seo Jun opens his eyes and wonders what is happening, only to find the Minotaur King munching the green onions like a baby munching on candies with a pleasurable face, saliva dripping from his mouth. Well, this was an unexpected scene, and the mommy bear couldn't believe what she was seeing. Seo Jun commented, 
isn't he just a hungry bull? But suddenly, the ox king, without saying any word, grabbed all the spring onions and ran like his life depended on it, leaving everyone confused. Then Seo Jun took a sigh of relief, saying he almost peed his pants. He thanked the mommy bear for trying to protect everyone, but his onion field got destroyed. But at least they were alive. One by one, Seo Jun, with all the sad rabbits, started to restore the field. And the tower manager was also glad and very happy that nothing happened to Seo Jun. Seo Jun thanked Aileen for worrying about him. Then, with a wicked smile, Seo Jun said now that something like this happened, he really had a great idea. He asked Aileen if she heard that the Black Minotaur is a tribe who can do anything to protect their honor and pride, and Aileen agreed. Well, at this point, even Aileen realized what kind of wicked plan Seo Jun was cooking. With a wicked smile, Seo Jun revealed that now that the proud tribe of Minotaur, the king himself, came uninvited to his home, destroyed his friend, and even stole his crop, well, he will make the Minotaur king his slave. The next day, Seo Jun prepares lunch for all his friends, which includes their regular roasted green onion stems, corn, and tomatoes. He tells the rabbits to eat quickly because then they have to get to work and mend the field that the Minotaur King ruined yesterday. However, the kids are throwing a tantrum like someone took away their iPad while their parents fail to console them. Seo Jun is not in the mood to show them any mercy. He grabs the rabbit kids, claiming that they shouldn't whine so much because they have no meat on the menu. He tells them to grow up already because they are now at the age where they should help their parents in the field, and he orders them to eat their food quietly. Seo Jun points towards King and tells the kids that even he is eating vegan food without complaining. He tells the kids that when the next blue moon comes, they will also become adults, and he asks them if they still don't want to grow up by that time. His words work on the babies who start eating. Seo Jun praises them, saying that this is what makes them cool white farming rabbits. He then goes to pat King and praise him for not being a picky eater. This makes Seo Jun realize that King is not getting bigger nowadays, considering the fact that his growth rate in the beginning was faster than the rate at which the universe is expanding. King falls on his back, and Seo Jun asks him if he is sick somewhere, because there is no way that his diet is lacking. Just then, Seo Jun hears Theo's voice and turns around to see him and the two Minotaur guards carrying the wolves. Seo Jun was about to welcome Theo, but then he turns his attention to the wolves and asks the minotaurs about them. Ox number three tells him that they are the Silver Wolf tribe, and Theo climbs on his shoulders as he reveals that they were the ones who targeted him earlier. He says that Rainy Mountain taught them a good lesson, but he didn't know how to punish them. That's why he brought them here, so that Seo Jun could make the decision. Seo Jun thinks that he should hear the story of the wolves first before deciding on their punishment and finds that they are asleep. Rainy Mountain tells him that the wolves were being noisy in the way, so she just gave them a dose of her fist, and Seo Jun asks her if they will wake up again. Theo interrupts them as he asks Seo Jun about why the field is in such bad condition, and he sighs before turning to the two minotaurs and revealing to them that it was the fault of their king. The minotaur couple flinch as they realize that their king has found out about their location, and they realize that they are done for, but Seo Jun tells them that they can worry about those things at a later time. Right now, he wants the Minotaur to relax after their long journey and tells them to join him at lunch. Food is one thing that can make them forget anything, and they immediately kick away the fear of their king punishing them and head towards the lunch table. They leave the wolves behind, and Seo Jun just watches them go. Then Theo tells him that there is something important he must tell him, and Seo Jun asks him what is up. As Theo was about to tell him about the things he learned from Dongshik on the 38th floor, but neither of them is aware that the leader of the wolves, Fang, is up and about to attack them from behind. They realize it too late, but fortunately, Seo Jun's personal bodyguard, Quang, steps in and sends the wolf away with a devastating punch to the ground. He covers Seo Jun as the captain curses him for interfering. Theo notices that Seo Jun's straw hat is gone, and he panics upon realizing that it turns out that the captain's attack was not a failure, and he quickly retreats as his companions wake up and take their positions. He holds the straw hat and thanks Seo Jun for returning it to him, leaving him in a state of panic about his most valued artifact being stolen. 